Does anyone else want to start, or do you guys want me to start this week? You can start. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't. Are you talking you as in Scott or me as in you? No. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I've confused I, myself. <laughs> I was talking to you, Jacob. <laughs> okay. Well, I can. I, I can leave all of this in now, so this is going to be the intro. Hi, everyone. This is the Digicast number 14, because last week we had some issues. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you would know that we did plan something, but we are not perfect. We are not radio professionals, as we have heard on this show before. Um, mm-hmm. Hence, I guess this is where I would reference dick conversations, but um, I don't really have to. They probably already know what I'm talking about. So, with that in mind, um, welcome. Welcome to uh, another episode of the DigiCast. Can you guys believe we've done 14 of these? No. Uh, Completely unbelievable. It goes by quick. Like, people haven't told us to quit yet. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that's success right there. Yeah, that's success. Um, well, we got some interesting topics this week. We got some stuff about Breath of the Wild, uh, another, uh, that little Majora's Mask fan film. I want to talk about that. Um, Bethesda had some good stuff to say, too, about Nintendo, which is shocking. So um, we got some, we got a good show. We got a good show planned out for you guys. I, I did some, some actual organizational things this week to uh, make this as high quality as possible. So with that in mind, um, I, I don't know, we can start out with... Uh, like games we've been playing this week uh nathaniel i'm assuming you have been playing pokemon sun and moon still yeah i just finished it a couple days ago oh shit that was fast what'd you think of it yeah um well i'm probably by the time this video is up i'm gonna have some sort of review slash discussion on my own channel but to say i guess just to sum things up it's just okay it was really overhyped the first half of the game was so painful because like the whole thing was just so much hand holding. Like it was ridiculous how much how easy it was. But well, you know, easy is not that big a deal because it's a Pokemon game. They're supposed to be kind of easy, but it was just overboard easy. Um and th- again, there was so much hand holding. Everyone told you where to go and you had a map that uh, had like a flag showing you where to go. Like there was just too uh, much. But the thing is the story gets really interesting around the end, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but there are some pretty big twists around the end of the story, and then it actually starts to get difficult once you get to the Elite Four, so that's how long it takes before the game gets hard, when you get to, like, the last hour of the game, but that last hour of the game is fantastic, and I'd say overall the presentation is really, really good. It, the game looks great. It sounds fantastic. The new Pokemon are a lot better than I've seen in the past. Like, the past generations, you know, we've seen things like ice cream cones and keys as Pokemon. There's not things quite as bad in this one. The worst thing I've seen is just a flower bracelet. It's called, like, Comfy or something. I don't know why it's a Pokemon, but... A flower bracelet? It's a bracelet with, like, flowers on it, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. That's good. (laughs) Well, uh, okay, uh, at least it sounds like it kind of paid off. I don't know, I mean, you, you have described everything that took me away from Pokemon, like the easiness, the hand-holding, all that crap. Like, it. that's why I couldn't even finish Orse. Like, I tried, I bought it, and I mm-hmm. never really was the biggest fan of Ruby and Sapphire to begin with, but... Yeah, this game actually hoping, felt... A- yeah, yeah, I bought that hoping that I would that I would enjoy it and I could get past that, but it was so easy and they treated you like you were just a moron so i could not stand that and it sounds like this is the same way which is really unfortunate yep it's it actually feels very very much like oris aside from the ending because the ending is just amazing like they did a really good job with it the the, the pacing of the story the difficulty it, it all works well i just wish the difficulty was more spread out like i understand make the few uh, first few hours of the game, easy. That's fine. Get people into the game, people that have never played before. But after that, they, they should have stepped up the difficulty more. And that's what I had the biggest problem with. And it, it kind of turned me off. That's why it took me... Like, I probably could have beaten this game in like three days, but it took me a week because I was just getting so bored playing. Yeah, I wish that they would... In, in my opinion, I wish that they would kind of stop treating Pokemon as this like hidden gem that some people might not have played. And I get that maybe kids, like this might be their first Pokemon game. But at the same time, like, there are existing games, you have existing fans, you don't have to do the same copy and paste job, like, for every single Pokemon game and just make it so simplistic and stupidly easy at the beginning and give you tutorial after tutorial. And it, 
it becomes overbearing and overwhelming like to a certain degree and that unfortunately that is what has completely driven me away from this franchise and made me just not even want to try them anymore but at least in this one like it sounds like the story has improved which is good because in past Pokemon games the story is pretty well non-existent so I mean that's good to hear at least well the story is really good and it's really disappointing because you're not doing gym battles you're doing these things called trials and you do something different for each trial like you have all these different tasks to complete and it would have been really fun if it were more difficult like now I had XP share on and that's why it was so easy for me so I bet if I had XP share off the game could have been more challenging but then that begs the question, why are they offering XP share to begin with? It doesn't seem necessary, but I, I needed to get through the game kind of quickly so I could make a video on it, or I'm, I'm going to. But, yeah, I mean, because the game, it, f it definitely feels different. It's just too easy. That's what yeah, I Yeah, the think way I look it. at it, too, is, like, there's a lot of Nintendo games that have come out in recent years that I, I almost have to make excuses for why they're so easy, and I have to make the game harder for myself, and I shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> Yeah. And that, that is one thing that does really annoy me about Pokemon games. That Like, in recent years, I've had to Nuzlocke them because they are just too goddamn easy and I can't stand it. I, I'm, not, I'm not looking for something that's going to be gruesome like, you know, Mega Man 1 through goddamn 5. Like, I don't want anything like that, but I want, I want a decent balance of it. Like, like you said earlier, pace it well, start me off at the beginning... You can give me a little hand holding, a little 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 dick grabbing, you know, I don't really care. But then like halfway through the game, please like ramp up the difficulty and make it somewhat challenging or mm -hmm. like at least make me think when I'm playing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that every now and then in Paper Mario Color Splash, I kinda feel like that. Like here here this is my weekly topic about Paper Mario Color Splash. I'm going to talk about this. Um Every now and then I feel like that in Color Splash, but at the same time, there are some parts that are actually kind of difficult in that game, and that, that pretty well solidifies my enjoyment, again, of the game, because it does switch things up, and there, there are times that I'll just completely and randomly die out of nowhere, and I'm like, oh, well, that happened, I need to pay more attention now. So mm -hmm. that's, that, that's a good way to balance that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Scott, so you had to leave for a second. Um, what's up? <laughs> What's up? What's <laughs> up? <laughs> oh, We're talking about Pokemon. Uh, yes, yes. Um, Your favorite. My favorite. I'm. I finally reached level sixteen in Pokemon Go because I'm a casual. I'm still like level three. Oh, you still play that? Yeah, oh, I'm still playing noob. it. I'm still oh. playing it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're updating that in December. They're gonna finally add Gen two Pokemon. What? I didn't know that. Uh, there's rumors. I don't know if it's true. I, honestly, I think they should have updated it like in September or October at the latest when it was still warm outside. Like, why are they? Yeah. Up, why are they uh, possibly updating the game next month when it's winter time? It Dude, here in Houston, it is still warm outside. Well, still. for you, well, yeah, because you're in Houston, but for everyone up north, it's gonna be cold as hell. I'm not going outside in December. Actually, not everything is about you, Nathaniel. The, uh, there are still some warm people outside. Are you guys aware oh. that this is actually one of the warmest winters we've had in like? A while um it's been people have been we've been saying that for like 20 years now this is the warmest <laughs> winter oh next year this is the warmest winter no that's not true yeah and then, and then in the 70s they were like this is the coldest summer this is the coldest summer we've had <laughs> i remember two years ago it, it was like uh ridiculously freezing but I'm gonna send you guys a chart later. I'm not like a global warming fanatic or anything, but I I, I do got I do want to send you guys a, a chart that I I know about. It's really scary. Oh God, politics! Uh. No, it's not. It's not political. I'm just. It, it's a chart. It's science. Anyways, <laughs> Pokemon. Science. Pokemon. It's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, has someone made a uh, me to fight with as Neil deGrasse Tyson yet in Smash? No. Does that exist? Because no, I, I would love so. to have him like fighting Ted Cruz or something. I think that would be really hilarious. Or having like Bill Nye, the science guy, fighting um what is that famous preacher who or that famous pastor who hates Pokemon? I want that. I want those two to fight. Oh yeah, the uh the Y guy? He's like why Yeah, the Y guy. Why? Yeah. Why? Why are we having these young kids fight with these monsters? Why? 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 <laughs> this is so great. Why? Uh, Why? Well, um, I'm I'm glad to hear that you did not hate uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon, and it sounds like it got better at the end, so that's good. That's more than I can say for X and Y, which seemingly got 
worse as it went on because the joy of yeah. it being in 3D died out after about three hours for me. I would recommend Pokemon Sun and Moon if you haven't played, if to someone, if they haven't played Pokemon in like a decade, because it's definitely improve, an improvement compared to uh, like 20 years ago. Obviously it's going to be, but like it, if you're like a huge veteran fanatic, wait to pick up the game so you can collect all your Pokemon and, and keep your, uh, I think there's like, now there's like 801 Pokemon or something like that. You can just collect the new ones and that's it. I genuinely hate being like a Gen 1 and 2-er. Like, I don't, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be snobby and just completely throw out these new generations of Pokemon. But, like, I have no other explanation for why I don't like the new ones aside from that they're, they're too easy and I, I feel like there's just hand-holding. But, like, the games themselves seem fine. But I guess I'm so used to having, you know, like we talked about uh, last week, but I guess no one heard that because of problems. But... Like I want to be, I want to be kicked in the pants a little bit. Like I want my rival to treat me like a complete dick. I want, I want to feel something when I go fight him. Like I want to kick his ass in his face every time I see him. And I don't feel that way in the new ones because they're all Jacob, like, oh, Jacob. let's be friends, let's heal your Pokemon. Oh, let me give you a blowjob. Oh, I this love is you. Twenty sixteen, and we got to be accepting and tolerant of everyone. Okay, we live in a new world now. And we can't have uh, bosses and villains or rivals that uh, treat us like garbage, okay? It's we not have acceptable. to be friends! Okay, Team Skull. Team Skull and Sun and Moon was great. They're like the best part of the game. They're like these 90s thugs, and they're they're so lame. Like, they're so stupid and cheesy yeah, that, sounds that great. it's like the greatest thing ever. They're, they're worth playing through the game. You play it for Team Skull. Like... Um, I also speaking of Gen One and Two. Now that I think about it, I actually went back and played uh, Pokemon Red last year, and that game is. I think that game is too difficult. I mean, it forces you to grind for several hours at a time, and a game shouldn't make you do that. So I don't think Pokemon's ever really had a decent balance of difficulty. I mean, the the first couple games way too difficult, and now it's just way too easy. Really? I don't think gold and silver... I, red and blue can be kind of, like, punishing at times, but I really didn't think gold and silver were bad. I thought they were definitely the the most well-balanced, for they're, sure. They're, I'd say they're still the, the most well-balanced. I'd say probably Gen 2 and maybe Gen... I don't know. I've heard the original Gen 3 is really easy as well. Except for Red's so. goddamn Pikachu in Pokemon Gold. Yes, that Pikachu is a son of a that bitch. That little shit is so powerful. In the mill tank, remember that mill tank you have to fight? Oh from? my god. Fuck Freaking that mill tank. Rollout. God oh. damn. It was like the first time you ever saw Rollout 2, you're like, what? what is this madness? What is this move? <laughs> mill tank sucked. My, my audio is very <laughs> loud right there. So that'll be fun. Well, um, I, I want to talk about something else because now I'm all fired up. Let's talk about... The Breath of the Wild game that's coming out next year. Have you guys heard about that? There's a new Zelda game coming out. Is there really? Really? Yeah. No yeah, way. Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah, I've heard it's gonna play um like you know like Uncharted and Minecraft um <laughs> from together. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> that's what uh what's his name uh, Ob One plays uh, tells me over there. <laughs> That's my favorite YouTuber. <laughs> <gasps> my name dropped. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so uh, there has been a rumor floating around that Breath of the Wild has been rated M in Australia. And I saw they, that, yeah. It's yeah, rumor, they seem though, to have a, a that slightly... That. Yeah, that's like an official... Oh, yeah, sorry, I probably worded that wrong. It's like an official rating, like it's rated M because it has it, uh, mild themes and moderate fantasy violence. And as for the M rating, uh, it stands for mature and it can contain con content of a moderate impact and are not recommended for teenagers who are under the age of uh, 15. But so, compared yeah. to the ESRB, the ESRB translated rating is more of a teen rating here in the United yeah. States. Yeah, I was just about to say that, but for clickbait reasons, this video is going to be titled Rated M and we're going to have a picture of Link with like... A, naked uh, emoji over his penis. Well, he can so, he, he can just be naked because yeah. he's naked in Breath of the Wild. He is. He is naked. We finally get it. After all these years, I can stop going to erotic uh, porn sites to look at my Zelda fanfic. Link is naked! Yeah. He, he really is, though. Um, and he has no nipples, we found out. We, we talked about his nipples, uh, another Digicast. And then we later found out he has no nipples in this game. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that was that was a, a hot, sexy topic that we brought out here for you guys. We were the first ones to notice that, by the way. No one else noticed that he had no nipples. But here on the Digicast, we always provide up-to-date journalism for you lovely people. That was actually some of the only breaking news we've ever had, was that Link does, in fact, not have nipples. Yeah. Uh, no one yeah, else we, was we reporting try. on it at the time. We got a huge surge in traffic from that. But after that, everything went downhill. That was our that well, was our we, moment. We do have other breaking news this week, though, like we just talked about. Uh, we found out Nathaniel Bandy kind of likes Pokemon Sun and Moon only because Team Skull. And he's a very high right. profile person on the Internet. So yeah, we, yeah. you heard it here first. Yeah, he's relevant. Sure. um well i i'm not necessarily shocked at all by this um i was going to be interested to see if this actually would have got a um rated m rating though just simply due to the fact that the visuals are so light and happy so maybe the the themes could have been a lot uh darker which would be interesting because um there are many nintendo games that do have very dark themes and are just kind of coded by this happy colorful uh cartoony thing like uh, earthbound um I, i've always said that earthbound is one of the most mature and realistic games i've ever played um it has very dark and uh adult themes in it what's well, not, and it's, I'm, not I'm glad it's not realistic that it has serious themes but it's not realistic it's very realistic <laughs> no it's not there's like psychic powers in earthbound what are you talking about yeah, that's a thing. There's a... Uh, How else did it? Donald Trump become president? That's obviously a thing. Well, I guess now that that's happened, everything's kind of realistic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you're yeah. right. I guess you're right. You heard it here first, but, everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Breaking news, yeah. num- number two from the Digicast. Do- Donald Trump uh, has mental powers. Um, uh, mental prob- powers, I mean. But you were, you were going somewhere with that, and I completely got you off track. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to say Earthbound's the greatest game of all time. I own a copy. I'm I better than most of you people out there who don't have a copy. Uh, my penis is larger because I have a copy of Earthbound. Uh, we can move on now. I doubt that's um, true. I don't have a copy of Earthbound, and my penis is average size. So You're very well endowed. I've seen it. I know. It's huge. Anyway, um, so, well, that, that's really all I have to say about that. It was a... I'm, I'm happy to see that it's... They're continuing the theme of keeping Zelda games rated teen, um, not necessarily making them, I guess, I'm, I'm not going to say childish or anything, but making them a, li- a little more adult themed, um, kind of making that one of Nintendo's more mature uh, flagship franchises. That's not, it's always good to see. I wish they'd keep that same mentality with like F-Zero and Metroid for sure, but we all know the story of that. I won't down the whole Digicast here. So, yeah. You know, what's interesting is that Zelda has like those very uh, kind of like family friendly ratings a lot of the time. But then you have games like Majora's Mask that are super dark and like kind of creepy and weird. But like um, I it, it, this gets me wondering, what would a M rated Zelda be like? Like what would, what would a more adult um, sort of uh not like adult as in like pornographic, but what like adult as in like dramatic and, um, you know, serious grown up stuff. What what would that look like in a Zelda game? And like, how how would that look in that swearing? Universe? Yeah. Well, maybe probably. Pro- honestly, the first thing they would do is probably just more violence. I think there's be even like, like and stuff. D- doesn't, Honestly, um, I, I think Majora's Mask is more mature and dark than 90% of any mature games. Like, m- most mature games are only mature because they have, like, blood or just a little more violence, and they might have some, some language issues. Yeah. Like, that's it. Isn't there a... Uh, I'm trying to remember. I, I want to say in Ocarina of Time, in the last fight, like, uh, Ganondorf bleeds? Yeah, they only changed it to green so they could keep the rating at E. Really? I, be- I believe in some, I think some of the releases it was read. I want to say the Japanese one was, I uh-huh. think the for the first like few cartridges they pushed out, I believe the, the blood was red, but then they changed it to green to avoid that issue. So yeah, I remember reading about that somewhere. But that kind of tells mm. me that Nintendo is, they've, they've tinkered around with like doing a more mature story before with Zelda. And then they've kind of, and then they kind of backed off it. And then with Wind Waker, they were like, "Oh, this is like a children's cartoon." I want to see them do mature with like Pokemon. <laughs> I want that to happen, where you have like gangs fighting each other with Pokemon to win. I don't know, like a bag of weed and governments being overthrown by armies of Pokemon. 
yes, by armies of children. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> I, w- I want to see that very badly. That, that's what they can do for the movie. Yeah, yeah, like you have you have Red rolling over at a bed and he's got a couple hookers by him and then he just like snorts a huge like line of coke and that's how he sees this Pokemon named Pikachu. Like Pokemon <laughs> itself is just a mirage. <laughs> the only reason they see it is because they're all doped up. But they can they can never do that though because then that movie would never get released in China. Oh, that's okay. This is a free idea. They don't even have to put that much money towards it. Just get someone like Adam Sandler to play Red. He'll do anything. <laughs> Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. The, the master Pokemon trainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess that, that actually kind of leads into... A, I, this is more like a little subtopic. I just wanted to talk about this. That really leads quick. into something? <laughs> um, well, the, the Zelda stuff did. Okay. okay. Um, that, that topic we just talked about could lead into many things that I don't want to talk about right now. <laughs> um, that's the after party that we always have. I will uh, quickly talk about the uh, Majora's Mask fan film. And I know you guys watched that because I forced you to. I wouldn't record unless you did. It was so I, good. I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you that, though. But, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It is, so uh, good. like we were saying earlier, um, Nintendo could take stuff like that and run with it. I would love to see them pour a little more uh, money and put a little more time into making these very highly developed cutscenes. And I've wanted voice acting in Zelda games for a long time. Because there's a, there's a certain point where I get sick of just hearing people go like, uh, uh, ha, uh, uh, uh. like I hate, I get sick of that type of. Can talking. you do the, the link, uh, like jump or like the link scream where he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that last one was pretty good. Oh no, that was no good. No, no, it was, it was bad. It was bad. I'm going to go, I'm going to go now. But yeah. I mean, Zelda is one of those properties that is you're able to go somewhere cinematically with it. And you can't do that with all things Nintendo. Cough, cough, Super Mario Brothers, cough, cough. Oh, you you hush up. You hush up now. Oh, come on. W- without them trying, we wouldn't have that absolute gem. That which is not... I may or may not be doing an episode of Indie Jacob on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I still haven't seen that movie. You know, they I put the super it. scope in that movie as a weird, like, gun you remember oh that? Oh my god, they did they? Do you, you don't remember that? I'm going to oh google this right this, now. Looking I'm going to put it in chat. Right I got to show you. Now, Mario Brothers movie super scope. I'm just going to I feel like Nathaniel gonna, hasn't said anything for a while and I I'm feel gonna, bad. I'm going to send it to you in the Skype. Bam, there it is. Oh, I see it. Oh, Bowser's holding it or the guy acting like Bowser is holding it. They put the super scope in the movie, but like then they like but then they made it look like an actual like weird gun of some kind yeah like a bazooka yeah but it's it's the super scope because references <laughs> it's so bad that movie was such a piece of shit and i'm so glad it exists just like batman and robin it is up there on the level of bird Demic, batman and robin and the mario brothers movie and stuff like samurai cop those are all just hidden treasures that we need to make sure that never die I actually need to get Mario Brothers on Blu-ray. I don't have it on <sighs> Blu-ray. Uh, anyway, um, we were talking about the Majora's Mask fan film uh, and really deviated course there. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> this is about a five... I think it was about a five-minute little short fan film. It was very, very well animated. Uh, the Skull Kid had a lot of emotion poured into him, and I really like felt bad for him. Yeah, it was yeah. actually really creepy. It was kind of like a Lord of the Rings, My Precious type thing. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's a very good analogy. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. Like, this this sentient being trapped inside this object was kind of, like, taking over his mind. and what, Which is always what I've thought of the Skull Kid, but seeing it presented in that way just had much more of an emotional impact. So, I I, I have always said that Majora's Mask is easily my, my favorite Zelda game from a lore standpoint, not from a gameplay standpoint. And I, I would love nothing more than to have a sequel, a prequel, anything that would expand upon that, like that version of Hyrule or Termino, sorry, and that world. I, I would kill, I would literally kill people to see that. You know, I never understood. There's always so many, like these really, really high quality CG trailers. Like a few years ago, there was a really good one on Sonic. I don't remember what it was called. And I mean, there's been a lot of stuff like this, but I have to wonder why don't these people take the time and build up the funds just to make like a short film instead of just a trailer. I mean, I know it would take longer, but it would be even more satisfying to see like a 15 minute or 20 minute film of some sorts. Well, some people have done stuff like that, but 
It's just um, more common to see just trailers, which is really the, disappointing because like like Major- that Majora's Mask thing, I want to see like an hour long movie of of that. Oh yeah, of course. And but the reason you want to see that is because it's so well done. But I think that when they made that, that's the whole point. Is that I think a lot of fans get together and make that kind of stuff because they want to call attention and say like, you know, please like do something with this because because it just doesn't happen. Um, and Nintendo, I, I have to wonder. I have to wonder if it's more like they don't want to put the time and resources into making something that's an hour long production, and then just to have Nintendo come over with a band hammer and just slap their wrists with it. Well, of course that's going to happen. But the Nintendo's been talking about making movies with their IPs for years and years and years. And they they have said out loud, Tatsumi Kimishima has said out loud, we don't want another Mario Brothers. We want to eventually do some, you know, there was rumors about a Zelda Netflix series and there was uh, talk about uh, doing other movies at, at different times. They need they need to do it, in my opinion. And, and part of the reason they need to do it is diversification. But another big part of why they need to do it is because some of their properties would actually translate really well to cinema, Mario not included. Unless it was something like I a Pixar have movie. Kirby, I want to have a live-action Kirby with Danny DeVito playing Kirby. That's what I want. <laughs> tell me, tell me that is not gold. Actually, Met- Metroid would be really cool. No, that's gold. That is pure <laughs> gold. And Mario Brothers was pure gold. I, I, I don't care what anyone says. I would definitely watch that Kirby movie for sure. Yes. Can you can you imagine how just fantastic that would be? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I want to see, like, horrible CGI animation of him opening his mouth very large and swallowing, like, everyone in his path. Oh, my gosh. I'm just a pool of smart ideas. (laughs) Zelda and Metroid both need to happen as movies. It can be done. Metroid has a very very high possibility of getting a deeper, like, game soon. The trouble... I really think that they're working on something big. The trouble with it, though is that Metroid has never been one of their top sellers. But know, as a, as but a it movie, can be. it really, really could work, I think, if they were to do like it right. In this, in this day and age, there's no reason why we shouldn't have a, like a nice story-driven, exploration-driven, first-person shooter Metroid game that would sell millions. There's no reason that we can't have an adventure, like sky-battling game with the Star Fox characters. We don't have to just have an on rail shooter of Star Fox anymore. Like we can have more than that. Like I've I've always wanted Star Fox to be like the Ratchet and Clank of Nintendo, but just take the sky or like the flight combat and add that into it. I've that's, always wanted that. That could it's work. Really so interesting, well. right? The fact that Nintendo has kind of defined Star Fox as being mechanically it's an on rail shooter. Because back in the day, I think when it was on Super Nintendo and everyone was playing it, they were talking of like it was it was basically like it was Nintendo Star Wars essentially, and everyone wanted it to be like a more along the lines of like an X-wing versus Tie Fighter type thing, which would have been more of a comparison back in the day, and uh, and later when Star Fox sixty four did all range mode, everyone was anticipating that it would be an open space sim basically at some point it that that, that was coming. And then years passed, and it just never happened. Not even with Star Fox Zero. Yeah, like it's such a shame too. Like that that fran- I've always I've always thought that Metroid and Star Fox probably have the most potential to expand upon what they've been given, and it just never has happened. I mean, they tried with Metroid Other M. You know, they tried with like Star Fox Adventures, but there was never a balance there. I mean, Metroid Other M was like ninety percent story, which really wasn't that good of story, and then Star Fox Adventures teased your teased your wiener at the beginning and then gave you no other space combat star star fox adventures was not supposed to be star fox adventures you know what the problem is and it was like dinosaur planet or something like that it was originally going to be dinosaur planet because for some reason they never wanted to let rareware do whatever it is they wanted to do number one but number two um like i don't I, this probably sounds really insulting in, to nintendo and maybe it should be insulting but i just don't feel like they're taking anything seriously uh, like, like other M was like, it was an, are you kidding me moment for me? It was like, <laughs> it was like, really? I don't know. Like, <sighs> and, and Star Fox adventures is taking something that, um, I mean, granted, like Star Fox doesn't have to be some elaborate IP that is, uh, that is like deep or whatever, but it's worth a little more than just saying like, you know what? Let's convert this other game with 
some generic title into essentially like a Zelda clone and slap Star Fox on it. They guess they just don't think their IPs are that valuable, or some of them like Metroid or Star Fox, so they'll just kind of throw it in to a game. You know, they'll replace like with Star Fox Adventures. It used to be another game. They just kind of threw the skin over that because they just didn't think it was worth that much. And I mean, right. from sales point, I guess they're kind of right. But at the same time, there was room for growth. So it's really sad yep. to see that th- they're basically just destroying their own IP when they don't have to be. Ugh. They could be and taking it, the time to make something decent, but they don't. Yeah, it's not gonna get it's not gonna get better either. Yeah, and like Star Fox Zero, that was just a reboot of Star Fox sixty four. Essentially, that's what it was. Like they could have tried right. something a little bit different, made something really really cool, something worthwhile, but they didn't really do that. They were too focused yeah, I mean, on the damn at motion least they controls. They experimented somewhat with it in the in like the two thousands year, like the early two thousands with Star Fox Assault and Star Fox Adventures, but it never really evolved that much. It's like they're experimenting, but they're not evolving. With at yeah. least with the the Star Fox and the Metroid franchise, like even Federation Force, that was another experiment that wasn't evolving the franchise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you there, I, and I also I would also add F Zero to this list because. Like we've said a million times on this podcast, I mean F Zero has so much potential with like all of their, all of their characters are so interesting. Like, and yeah. I want to see mm-hmm. more of them, but they they just get locked to just being these futuristic vehicles, and then you race with them. And I mean, like, don't get me wrong, F Zero is fun as hell, and I love F Zero, especially GX. But there is so much more you can do, and like Nintendo, there is not enough open world racers like in the gaming industry. I mean, you have like Forza. And then Need for Speed Most Wanted You. I mean, there's really not much. And, like, F-Zero could be a huge game if you did something like that. Like, can you imagine an online community of of F-Zero, like, whatever they're going to call it, F-Zero, I don't know, HX for the Switch, whatever the hell it is. Um, can you imagine, <laughs> like, having Switch an X. online, yeah, like, having an online component to that, even, even not just being just racing, but having hub worlds and, like, making an open world where you can explore. Having Captain Falcon be able to get out of the car yes oh god that literally would be so yes. cool <sighs> i've and repeated that so much because i want that so bad i, I want I an know. open world f-zero i want a new cruising game that's open world too i would oh god ah. <laughs> <laughs> again i just oh don't my feel god nintendo. like nintendo is taking it seriously like they need to they need to really have a hard look in the mirror and, and that, I don't I don't even want people to think I'm just bitching at Nintendo for that. I like ever like whole gaming industry, hear my plea. Someone make another open world racing game with hub worlds and like I can explore because no one else is doing it. And it's such an untapped market and it drives me insane. And I don't want to buy an Xbox One for Forza. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> what like I I give me that. Make Gran Turismo sport that. I don't know. Anything. Another Diddy Kong Racing. We've never talked about that on the podcast, but make that happen. <laughs> yeah, we've Christ. never talked about DKR2, ever. Well, now that you bring that up Forza, can't you play some Xbox One games on PC now? I thought they added that. Uh, or they implemented yeah. that into some games. There you go. My just... my PC is just not powerful enough to enjoy it. <laughs> uh... I mean, I, I could play it decently, but I, I wouldn't be able to really max out the potential of it. I, I I pretty much exclusively game on consoles now. Just It's just easier, you know? I don't really... I just don't want to fiddle around with PC gaming. It's not even that hard anymore. It's not hard at all, really. It's more like plugging the controller and play, but just dealing with graphical settings, I just like, nah, just give me the controller. It's, it's all I want to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> well, that, that really went somewhere. So, um... <laughs> I don't even remember what what originally uh, that that originally came from. I don't know. We were talking about Majora's Mask. Mask. Film. Oh yeah, that yeah that <laughs> makes sense. So <laughs> that just went into like a huge Nintendo bitch fest. <laughs> Oh god, I I don't I don't want people to ever think that like we dislike Nintendo. Like all of us clearly love Nintendo so much. We just we have things that we not. want from them, and they don't do it, and then they make like stupid animal crossing spinoffs and it's just yeah. infuriating <laughs> yeah well we're not bitching what's we're critiquing them we're because we're giving them or we're, we're not obviously we're not giving it to them but we're suggesting ideas and things that they could be doing to improve their company overall but it's just not, not happening and it's frustrating to see that 
Nathaniel, I can see you. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> why my camera turned on. Okay, well, you look go. good from this angle. Ooh, ooh, that sound yeah. foam or whatever that is, baby. Mm. No, yeah, I, I to see like your chin. It was great. And and I, I am. I'm a Nintendo fan. Everyone who talks to me basically knows that. Even when I claim not to be, they're like, "You're a liar" because you always talk about Nintendo. And uh, <laughs> like you came out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like that's the whole reason that we're bitching is because we care about what this company, which is a legendary company, by the way, uh, not because they were around to make playing cards in the late 1800s, but because they are legendary to gaming. And uh, it is like the company that essentially launched the industry after the industry crashed um, and, and single-handedly brought back video games for the general consumer. And, uh, and it is the inspiration for all of the, the developers and the designers who make all of the best, most su successful, popular stuff today. And it's like they've gotten into this weird creative thing right now where they're just not like it, it's, it's like they're I don't know how to describe it. Like they're just they're not taking risks. And then when they are taking risks, they're taking the wrong ones. And they're just kind of ignoring what everyone wants, which they're notorious for, and they've been notorious for that. It's just weird. It's so weird. Nintendo well, is the only gaming company that I have bought the same game from them probably like five to ten times. I don't even... I honestly don't want to know how many things I have Super Mario Brothers on, yeah. or the original Legend of Zelda, or Super Mario World... Or like Kirby's Adventure. I mean, I, I actually really don't because that would probably make me feel bad about myself. I think to uh, end on an optimistic note, it does look like things are going to actually change with the Switch. So let's cross definitely. our fingers. Let's hope that they're doing something really big with the Switch. We'll find out January twelfth. They're having a presentation for probably price release, official release date, exact day, games, stuff like that. So. I really hope they're doing so. I think they're going to actually change and do something. I don't know if it's going to be a good change or not, but we'll just have to see. I'm going to jump right in here and uh, switch us to an amazing transition to another topic about the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, Bethesda talked about uh, the Nintendo Switch, and they have said, um, I believe um, they're one of their game directors, uh, Todd Howard, he said that... Um, that he loves the Switch demo, like the actual demo unit, that what he's played on it. Um, he said it's, it's definitely the best demos, or best demo that he's ever seen, um, for sure. And he said that um, the device itself, it's a very uh, smart device, and with what they're doing with it, it's very smart. Uh, they're definitely going to be supporting it. That is so great to see from a company like Bethesda, because as we talked about before, we've seen that from companies like Ubisoft, who say that about literally every other goddamn platform on the market. So it's nice to see a more a more reputable company like Bethesda, who does make phenomenal games. I'm very excited to see if they actually bring, you know, like Skyrim or Fallout 5, if that's going to come out to the Switch. I would love to see a lot of their games on the Switch. They're going to bring mm -hmm. Skyrim. I'm, it, it's going to happen. I know they... Uh, we don't know. They never I, confirmed uh, it. Yeah. it's We don't they're, know. They're going to they're gonna do it. There's, God. It's just, oh my god, I would love Skyrim. Which, by the way, it's really funny that like we're talking about that and what they said after the release of the Switch trailer with saying that, oh, we don't know if we're going to do Skyrim. And then like you're like, they're really reputable. And <laughs> they're, they're saying that the Switch demo was great. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what I think what he meant more was that Bethesda is a company that Nintendo and Nintendo Bethesda don't really connect very often, and to see such a strong connection before the console's already out is kind of a big deal. Yeah, the sure. only the only thing that sucks is I don't believe that we saw Rockstar on that list of developers who were going yeah. to bring stuff to the Switch. Yeah, that's no really the only too, company probably. who I'm like, God, we need your games on this console. I would love to play Grand Theft Auto Six like while I'm pooping. Or Red Dead 2. Yes. I mean, if that were on the Switch, yes. that would be fantastic. Rockstar's yes, never Red done anything with Nintendo, have they? Uh, there was a Grand Theft Auto game one... on the DS. I remember yeah, that. yeah, I think they had one on the DS. Did they have one on the GBA? Oh, okay. Yes, they did, actually. It was like GTA 3. I don't remember what it was. 
But both of them were like just like weird spin-off games. But yeah, I mean, yeah, besides, aside from Chinatown that, Wars. Yeah, Chinatown Wars. That was one on the DS. But I mean, it, they don't have like their main stuff on their consoles. So it wouldn't yeah, be that L- surprising L- if L- we don't. Noir wasn't on there either. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be that surprising if we don't see Rockstar games on the Switch. But damn, it'd be pretty nice. Oh, God. But I mean, if we if we get Bethesda games, that that'd be good. That'd be good enough for me. If we can get like yeah. Dark Souls on a handheld and console hybrid, oh please God, let that happen. But um, are we good to go for questions? I or think we'll so. talk about Bethesda some more. Let's go to questions. Let's go to questions. Let's go to questions. Time for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we had a very interesting conversation last night about pizza, and I would like to quickly continue that before we start oh, on questions. Oh, yes. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, yes. <sighs> so, um, apparently, uh, Scott is an avid lover of Domino's, and uh, Nathaniel is a huge uh, lover of Papa John's. And I really don't care that much for either one, but um, I do like CeCe's Buffalo Chicken, uh, so we got to talk about this. We have to talk about this. Yeah, okay, look. Um, first, some <laughs> health advice, okay? Don't ever eat pizza. It's really bad for you. Second, if you are going to eat pizza, you need to do it right, and that's by eating Domino's because that garlic crust is amazing, all right? Uh, no. Here's the no. problem with your argument. Domino's sells cheap because that's all they can sell it for. Papa John's costs more because the ingredients are... Most of them are fresh. The meats are not fresh. But I used to work at Papa John's, and I can tell you the dough was never frozen. It was always fresh when it came in. Um, we chopped onions and green peppers every single day. We got fresh orders of it every single day. So there's a reason those pizzas are a bit more expensive than like Pizza you Hut and Domino's. Sound see, like a Papa John's commercial, Nathaniel. I've told now, you now see because here, it's true. Papa John's sauce is not actual marinara. It is the blood from the workers' hands from cutting all that <laughs> damn onion fresh every day. And another thing, you guys are arguing about the quality of your pizza while I'm sitting back here saying CC's is shit, and I know it's shit, but it's cheap shit, so it's good. I can eat. It's only six dollars. It's CC's worth pizzas. it. You can eat it. I, I don't see now. Now I have not gotten into this argument by saying that CC's is better than either one of you. It's it's better value, but the pizza itself, no, no, it's pretty mediocre, and I know that. But the buffalo chicken is is absolutely to die for. And if you argue that, though, you can't because that isn't the objective truth, and I have ordained that from God Himself. So thank you and good night. <sighs> People from New York City are hitting the unsubscribe button right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Chicago. <laughs> And They're just like, Italy itself. These we guys probably have are a lot of Italian viewers. Arguing sure. about pizza chains. Unsubscribe. <laughs> hey, I, I am definitely a pizza hipster. There's a lot of local stuff that I like. Uh I pretty well do not like any I would say mass market mainstream type of pizza. I sound like such a Starbucks lover right now and I hate it. Um, well, Starbucks but... lover. If you're a pizza hipster, you wouldn't be a Starbucks lover. You would be a uh some obscure coffee place lover. If you're a oh yeah, hipster. like Cafe Joe's down the road. Yeah, hipsters hate Starbucks. They can't. They can't yeah. be drinking that mainstream garbage. But Buffalo Chicken Pizza from Cece's is the best thing ever, and you guys can continue. And oh, and their cheese bread. And their cheese bread's better than both of you guys. I just like to say that. And every potential sponsorship we could have gotten for pizza or from from Papa John's or Domino's or Starbucks, all those sponsorships just went out the window with Jacob's words. But Papa John's can still sponsor me on my channel if you'd like to do that. <laughs> I will eat your pizza every day and die at the age of 35. No problem. I have always said that I am probably going to drop dead of a heart attack at 50 because of how much spicy stuff I eat. My stomach is not going to last that long. I'm not even going to make it that far. No way. No, I probably won't, to be honest. I, f- I feel like I'm 50 right now. I was talking about that earlier today. <laughs> well, that's because you just take coffee and put it in a syringe and stick it in your veins oh i know it's so good it's so amazing (laughs) i did the same thing with frank's red hot (laughs) i'm probably gonna die early too because i drink way too much red bull or i have been because i'm in college right now maybe i'll stop when i get out of college but i drink so many energy drinks and i'll be honest here i i stopped with energy drinks because i got this weird like 
bulbous pulsating feeling down under and i was like uh eh, these have to be linked so i quit bulbous bulbous as in the sore of bulbous himself oh, oh why oh bringing it around to peak your pokemon video games well i don't know what i just said what the hell are you talking about questions no should probably go to questions yeah okay. we got a few here <laughs> <laughs> So just so, know um, Papa John's is the best. Anyway, go ahead. Move Domino's. On to uh, I'm just going to have to get it to say John's. that. Uh, better ingredients, Jordan, better food stuff. Jordan Garber says, if you Gerber, could fix one Gerber. thing about the Wii U. Jordan. Oh, Gerber. I was looking through my pot filter. That's not a good thing. That my really says terrible. Gerber? Like, like, like the baby food brand? Oh, man. Yeah. You know what? They're going to be so angry at me because I just said that. I bet they get that all the time. No, we're going to get a Gerber sponsorship <laughs> and they're going to love it. So oh, that'd be whatever. great. Ooh, we that'd get to be, eat baby uh, food? Yes. I'm down. Oh my Ooh. god, smear that all over my pizza. If it's Ooh, free, yeah. our ad rev isn't going to be giving us free baby food without a sponsorship. That's the only way to make Domino's better is baby food. <laughs> so what was the question? <laughs> the, quest, <laughs> the question was, if you could fix one thing about the Wii U's lifespan, the marketing, the name, the games, what would it be and why? Uh, The first two? Because those were equally as terrible, so the first two. The number one's the name. It's got to be. Don't, yeah, the, don't the name itself fixes again. most of the marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people to this... Most people I talk to to this day still have no idea that it's a different console. I know. Yep. People think that Nintendo's last console was the Wii. Still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both my parents, they know. They've seen me playing the Wii U hundreds of times, and they still don't know it exists. Yeah. yeah I think I'm no, playing a Wii. Exactly I'm like, no. like the Wii. And you say yeah. it's the Wii U, and they'll call it the Wii right afterwards. It happens every yep. day. Yeah, so you're going to go play that Wii. That is like a good game. I don't really know who I was trying to do there. But they but, did a fantastic yeah. job marketing the Wii, I guess, because it sold oh, over they got 100 lucky, million freaking honestly. units. Yeah. yeah. That, no, they had a very clear, concise marketing choice with the Wii, and they're, they're doing the yeah. same thing with the Switch right now, which makes yep. me so happy. Like, that trailer had no words aside from the Switch and the people at the end saying, Nintendo Switch! And that was it. And they didn't have all this shit about the controller and oh, ugh, play new games on the controller when they just kept showing stuff that was on the Wii. I mean, like everything about the Switch marketing so far, spot on. So much better than the Wii U. Yeah, I would I would just have to say the name. The Switch for, marketing for sure. just makes me want to be myself and try to have a good time. Uh, holding it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding it back. And I might not be able to. Uh, in the... Uh, Jack H. asks, in the midst of a new Pokemon game, I gotta know, Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle? Charmander. Charmander. No question. No I question. Really, Char I really don't want to be myself. <gasps> and big Try Charmander. to have a good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say Charmander, too, and that's fire. really cliche, but he's fire. And as a little boy looking at those three Pokemon, I was like, oh, I want to be the one with fire because he fire! causes destruction. Yeah. Fire. What Star Fox. You? Smash oh, God. <laughs> that's, what he's, that's what Fox sounds like in Smash 4. He's like, fire. He sounds so stupid. <laughs> I was thinking more of, I was thinking more of Sora from Kingdom Hearts 1. He's like, fire. <laughs> but yeah, no, Fox is pretty atrocious in Smash 4 also. <laughs> like his voice actor gets higher and higher pitched for the games melee it's like fire and brawl fire four fire it's like, it's <laughs> here bad. i come that's here also I come. that's here that's really like all anime though and when you think about it like anything japanese just kind of kind of gets more high-pitched shut generation. your cisgender american mouth uh. <laughs> 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 um oh what what did you uh pick nathaniel I, I don't think we actually heard yours i said charmander <laughs> oh, you're also Charmander, we buddy. All said Char oh yeah, we're all Next Charmander. Halloween, we need we need to meet up and all dress like as Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. <laughs> I get to be Charmeleon because I like being stuck in the middle. Aha! Uh -huh. I think that question is kind of like rock paper scissors, though, isn't it? Like in a way. No, Charmander's better. I mean, when you think about it, like, like Charmander could like fry up Bulbasaur, but can't be frying up Squirtle because Squirtle's all about water. You know, and well, I'm we like, could get into the topic of EVs and special attack and special defense, but I don't care about any of that bullshit. So I'm just going to move on. 
<laughs> that would be taking everything too seriously. Okay, yep, move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, when listening to a new song, does it make you think about any games that it might go well with together? Do you think it's better than listening to the game's original track, especially if... Okay, hold up. Let's just answer the first one, because that second question sounds completely different. So do you guys ever listen to a new song and think it would go really well in a game? Um, I'd yeah, say, like, I, remixes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm the same way, especially with racing games. Um, there's a lot of stuff I listen to that I'm like, wow, this would be really, really awesome in an open world racing game that doesn't exist. And uh, the second part of the question is, do you think it's better than listening to the game's original track, especially if the track is bad? I, I kind of get what this question's saying, but I don't really have an answer for it. Uh, here's here's a, a better question. Is, is there a game that we all think has a terrible soundtrack? Um, all of the new Super Mario Bros. games. Because they're all the same damn songs. Yeah. I so, would say, like, No Man's Sky. Really? Does that even have music? Exactly. <laughs> hey, be careful. People are going to say the same thing about Breath of the Wild. They're going to be like, this game doesn't have enough music. <laughs> <laughs> I barely even played No Man's Sky. Like, what I, what I saw, though, it just seemed to be a bunch of a weird ambient noises, like, and not much else. So It's, it's meant I mean, to be uh, yeah. a, a relaxing game, Jacob. It's meant to be oh. one of those like things where like it's just um, like exploration and ambience. It's ambience, Jacob. Oh, sorry, I had to shut up for a second because I got hit with such an ambient wave of destruction. Yeah. Ooh. Well, we got time for one more by Mister Gavin, Gavin Thomas. Thomas. Uh, what do you yeah. think the gimmick will it will be for the console after the Switch, and what do you think it will be called? It will be the Super Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Classic. U. Nintendo Switch U? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nintendo Switch U. You switch. Uh, Nintendo Switch you away from my console. Huh? We're so smart and clever. Nintendo Switch you to the Xbox One? <laughs> oh, shit. Dare you switch to the PS4? <laughs> oh, God, you're hurting my heart. Anyways... I really have no idea. It's hard to predict things like that. It's like predicting technology ahead of time. It's so hard predicting Nintendo too. <sighs> yeah, yeah they Nintendo do as well. Not follow anyone's rules. No, like imagine was... a GameCube to Wii. Who was expecting that? Like, yeah. Well, who was expecting the DS? The the that GameCube. Too, yeah. The GameCube following the N sixty four wasn't that weird though, and neither was the N sixty four following the SNES. It's only like you know right when the Wii hit that they started just going crazy with the controllers and the peripherals and motion and all that. I think if they're really smart, what they should do is just take the switch and just stick with it. Just come out. If they want to come out with a few more controllers that are regular controllers with buttons on them, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Give us different D pads or something. Just don't go absolutely nuts uh, I think that they can just go stable with it from here on out because that's what PlayStation did, and it all turned out fine. It turned out okay. Everybody's everybody's got PlayStation. Everybody, everybody knows uh, PlayStation for, control. I would we'll be just shocked though the... if they went for augmented reality. Oh yeah, well they've already they they already did a little bit of augmented reality, didn't they? With like for the wasn't 3DS, there like some yeah. Nintendo stuff that was augmented reality sort of. I don't remember. Well, there was the AR cards for the 3DS. That was kind of their AR. Yeah, but I mean, like, like Microsoft Hololens kind of thing. I would not be shocked oh, if so Nintendo like VR. really hit that hard. But I agree with Scott. I just kind of want them to stick with the Switch mentality and keep improving on that concept and making that more powerful because um, tablets aren't going anywhere. Um, consoles maybe are. You know, depending on how the industry, this is a very pivotal moment in the gaming industry. So depending on how that goes, you know, consoles may not be around in the same form next generation. So yeah, I'm, I think you know, I'm they're not on sure. the way out. I think we're, they've been on the way we're out We're in a, a very while. interesting point um, right now. And it's going to be weird to see where the gaming industry goes in 10 years. Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if consoles are pretty well on their way out and everyone had like their own Steam type subscription services. Um, I, I really think that at this point, like, because, uh, they can't be Apple, Apple, uh, Apple has, <laughs> ha Apple has the iPhone, right? And the iPhone's really good for what the iPhone does. 
similar to uh, its competitors, which are probably better at this point. But anyway, the point is, is that with Nintendo, the Switch is now their thing. And they have an opportunity to stick with that as being their thing, which is basically like, yeah, we do mobile, but we do mobile for like actual gaming. Like we're, we're going to be people who play real games with... Um, <laughs> I want that to be their marketing tagline. Like, we make actual games. Actual so games. So fuck off. Like, really, man. <laughs> like, 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 if you want to play Zelda, like, we're going to let you do Zelda, but we're going to do it, you know, our way without dumb touchscreen controls on an iPhone. And, uh, and we got, we got buttons and analog joysticks and everything and everything's great. And, you know, we're going to have local multiplayer anywhere you go. And if that's going to be their thing, then that, that should be their thing going forward, I think. And I think they can stick with that. If the switch sells really, really well, then the smartest thing they should do is do exactly what happened between NES and SNES. Just upgrade the hardware Im improve the, the feel of the controllers a little bit. Maybe do one or two little buttons if you want to get fancy. You know, add 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 some social media sharing, maybe Nintendo, Nintendo, and uh, Apple. It, it'll be great. Apple, yeah, it'll be nice if they if they just stick with it. I think. As long as they bring back the Wii Vitality sensor, I'm gonna be perfectly okay. Oh, dude, that that is the best way to end this podcast because I want that to be in everyone's mind when they go and shout at Nintendo from the rooftops about the Vitality sensor. I want Give them me to the bring Vitality. Back please i i want the 64 disc drive i don't know what you guys are talking about Ooh, yes me too i That's want a the very good idea to bring back also i want the switch disc drive whatever happened to gaming discs like why are nintendo not pursuing those and they're going with <laughs> cartridges the switch like, what the switch disc drive is how you're going to be able to play wii u games on the switch <laughs> oh my god money actual printed money from that idea you could have that nintendo <laughs> I want to buy an added peripheral for your oh, console. Man. So, you guys do things, and you can tell people about those things right now. Yeah. Someone. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> um, go ahead, Scott. You can go hey, first. Hey, go to, go to scottfreecapital.com, and if you want to learn programming, I got some stuff on the way. Uh, I'm teaching beginners how to write Python, and if you go bug me on Twitter. I'll, I'll tell you where you can start learning some code samples of Python and stuff. You can write code and start a career and maybe even work on, on video games one day and it'll be awesome. So, oh, and, I, and I'm, I'm on Twitter at Scott Lee, but yeah, go ahead, Nathaniel. Uh, yeah, just, you can find me on YouTube. Just look up Nathaniel Bandy. You'll find my channel. Uh, I make a lot of videos about Mario, Mario Kart, top tens about that kind of stuff, making some things about Nintendo Switch, as well as uh, fun little ROM hacks. Um, and that is pretty much it. Well, cool, cool. Um, and as you all know, I am uh, Andy Jacob. I started doing my new stuff. Um, if you have not checked out uh, my l most recent two uploads, I'm kind of working on something new, a little more experimental, um, trying to focus a little more on comedy with gameplay, and um, having a good time so far. And... For those of you that have checked it out so far, thank you very much. Thank you for leaving your comments and your constructive criticism. I want to keep making that better. Um, I do plan on having the first full-fledged episode of Indie Jacob out soon. And by soon, that could be two weeks or a month. You know, I don't know. Busy man. So I will do what I can to get it out for you guys. I'm very, very excited to release it. The topic is going to be something that is very, very dear to my heart. And you will see what that is eventually. So with that, uh, uh, bye. Yeah. Bye, and make uh, sure. Bye. Papa John's also, all the way. Jacob, you should have an end card here that shows Indie Jacob plays videos. Oh, I could do that. I could, I guess, leave those up right now while we're talking and make this really For only twenty seconds though. Only twenty experience. seconds. We only have twenty seconds to do so that. So we need to shut up right now. We only have twenty seconds. And oh my god! Uh, think come of something to an end, and they're not going to be able to see the video anymore. Think of something all clever right. to say. I have nothing. I have nothing either. I know, oh better God. ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. All right, bye.